everyone. I've been obsessed with these uh, mechanical keyboard switches. Uh, these specific ones are uh, Cherry MX clones. Um, actually, these ones are Utemu uh, switches, and these are the type that don't make a clicky sound. And I'm obsessed with these things because they have such a long service life. The little tiny uh, click button um, regular things that you'll see in electronics uh, beginner kits they're prone to wear out uh, and they get dodgy connections and you know they're not great they do work though they're just not fantastic these guys here uh, coupled with these uh, keycaps you can get very inexpensive that you can actually put a paper insert in uh, make for a fantastic longer term solution that actually feels really satisfying to use now that obsession came to a head when I designed this macro pad. I'm going to put the link in the description so you can see uh, this is for um, doing some sim racing. So I've got all my differentials, four wheel drive, high, high, low range, stuff like that. And it is connected to a Mega 32U4 microcontroller so I can just go USB right into the computer. And this thing works just as a macro pad. Link in the description, uh, check it out. But this is not what this video is about. I've recently found out that uh, these switches, which are actually supported by the frame around here, uh, and then they slot into the PCB and get soldered, um, they don't actually need those pins to be mechanical, right? It's all about the frame that it sits in. And so I found out that there's these little uh, hot swappable sockets that fit in from the backside. These things are pretty cool because they allow you to slot in your key and then you can actually remove it, replace it with a different feeling key. By the way, there is about uh, 60 or, or 70 different variants of these uh, key switches, depending on your preference. Um, and so I felt like this was going to be a cool addition to my macro pad. Even better than that, if you look here, there is a slot for an LED to shine through. And those LEDs, the common ones used for um, these kinds of keys, are the SK6812. Now, if you've never heard of the SK6812, that's not a problem. They work like the WS2812, aka a NeoPixel, except they mount on the back side of the PCB. So these things are not breadboard friendly, but they are definitely maker friendly, because all you have to do is design a quick PCB, and you're on your way. And so here are my PCBs themselves. These guys here. And as you can see on the front side, there's enough space to drop one of these key switches in. But on the back side, that's where these uh, hot swappable sockets go. There's room for a capacitor, a 10 nano, just like the um, NeoPixels need, and room for the NeoPixel. Now, I've designed this to be a, a 4x4 matrix, but this time there is no spot for a microcontroller. The reason for that is I've got this interface up here, which you can plug into any Arduino, any ESP, anything you want, because this just runs like a strip of NeoPixels plus a 4x4 switch matrix. Let me show you. My project actually stems from this listing for a 4x4 keypad module on AliExpress, which is no longer available. I will link you to this one though, it's a 3x4 module, just probably a lot more reasonable anyways. Um, this one is available, but yeah, the 4x4 is not, and I'm nothing if not ambitious. So what's nice about this listing though, is that if you scroll down, they actually give you the wiring diagram, and this is exactly the diagram I based my project off of, but instead of these switches here, I just use the Cherry MX style switches. So to show you how it works, uh, basically you just have to follow these lines here. You can tell that the columns are all linked together. And over this way, the rows are all linked together. And between the rows and between the columns are resistors. And so let's pick a switch at random. Let's say switch six. When you press switch six, you've got VCC over here. And it's gonna go through a 5K resistor all the way across here and then come down through the switch to down to here, and then up 1K, and then a 10K to ground. So basically you have uh, 5K on one side of the voltage divider and 11K on the other. 
And if you hit the switch right next to it, switch five, then you've got 5K on one side of the voltage divider and you've got 10K on the other. So you'll get a slightly different analog value. And that's really what we're doing here. We're gonna read the analog value on this pin here and that'll tell us which switch was pressed. Switching over to my KiCad project now, you'll notice that uh, this file resembles that circuit diagram and that's because it's based on it. The big difference though is I used specific Cherry MX switches. Uh, my Utemu switches have the same footprint and that comes with an addressable LED as well. That also means I have an extra wire here which will actually go and be the digital in part of the LEDs and then the digital out is linked to the digital in of its neighbor and so on and so on. So looking at the PCB layout from the top now, uh, you'll notice that I have uh, five volts, ground, analog pin that you're gonna read with your Arduino and this one here is what you're gonna use to control the WS28112 style LEDs. Should be fairly straightforward, so let's get to soldering. Let me show you how to hand solder this. You can order them uh, from a PCB house with the, with the stencil already, um, but I haven't actually tried that. I'll show you how I hand solder them and you can see if it works for you. So first things first, uh, I do recommend starting with the capacitor. The capacitor is kind of small, it's 0805. You can also use the exact same technique uh, for the 0805 uh, resistors on the board. So just get a good tin on there, um, grab your 100 nano uh, capacitor and you just kind of sneak it in there. I'm actually going to flip this around, make this a little bit easier on me. And then basically I just want to uh, heat the pad, introduce the capacitor and then get out of there. Sort of like that, so it's tacked down, and then you can come around and do the exact same thing on the other side. And then, if you need to, you can always uh, reflow the first side. For the LED now. which would be the next one that I would want to do. Uh, the negative has the leg with the, with the corner cut off of it. And so the negative is marked here on my silk. So you've got uh, negative, positive, in and out. And same thing, just go over and tack it down. Not supposed to linger super long on these. Uh, and then once it is solidified, you can go ahead and finish the rest of the legs. There we go. As for the socket, probably the easiest part all you have to do is drop it in here, pins facing down, uh, LED by the way was also facing down, and then you just heat up your pad and your socket and flow some solder. I like to flow it from underneath, I feel that's a little bit more successful. And then just before you lift, give it a good push. And once that's tacked down, you can go over to the other side, do the other side. These are meant to be machine flowed, so they're a little bit heat resistant. I wouldn't worry too, too much about them. And then just repeat, same process with all the uh, resistor dividers and all the rest of the pads and I'll bring you right back. It might take you a little bit to get to this point, uh, but I had a blast. I was just listening to a podcast. Uh, if you're looking for a recommendation for a podcast, why not the Simple Electronics podcast? Makers, YouTubers, all sorts of cool people I get to chat with. Link in the description. 
But either way, this is what it looks like. And what's really cool is that everything is rear mounted. So all those LEDs, they shine through uh, towards the front. Um, now, I did add a pin header and I gave it a little bit of a twist and I'll show you why uh, very shortly, but not right at this moment. Um, at this point, if you're not sure about your soldering, you can actually give this thing a uh, five volt ground and a digital uh, signal from uh, a, a NeoPixel library and these will light up just like a NeoPixel, just be like a 16 LED strip of NeoPixels. Um, but yeah, I've got my switches here, as you can see, all set up and they should drop right in here. And there you go. And also don't forget you've got a voltage divider pin. Um, I believe it's this one here and that one you can read with your analog um, you know, analog read on your Arduino and get a volt voltage divider. But that's not all, because if you remember correctly, I said that this frame here is where it gets mounted, and so you need a frame. Well, I also have designed the frame for this. Uh, so this is the front frame. There we go, so this fits perfectly on top of this. And here is a base plate in order to have it sit nice and level. And the deal with these switches is that you need to put on the frame before you can put in the switches because the switches drop into the frame and then they go into here. So you can actually assemble this whole thing together with four screws and it's got a nice little opening in the back, right? That's why I had the opening. Um, and then you just slot your switches in. And so if I've done a good job of my PCB work, this will go in with a little bit of difficulty, right? It has to be kind of secure. And plus I don't have it bolted together. So that went in, so that switch is now very, very firm. And you'll see, did I get the pins in? I did, you can actually see the pins over on that side. And so you could just go in and populate every one of your switches. I'll bring you back once that's done. And this is what the final product looks like. Uh, it's nothing fancy. The bottom is open. You need some short screws, uh, about six millimeters uh, long. If you have only 10 mil long screws, you can uh, print yourself or get some washers and put them in. So I've got two short, two of the proper size uh, M3 screws and two a little bit longer M3 screws. Um, you gotta make sure also that the pins pass all the way through. The 3D print is made that it actually works pretty well, but if it went in and it bent a pin, it didn't go into the socket, um, you'll see the, the missing sort of pin on this side. And what you have to do is you use a key uh, remover. There's a special remover tool. I'll link in the description where to get it. And you squeeze the, the key and you pull it out. The other way to do it is to use something you know relatively sharp. I use these pliers or these pliers here and you just push on this white pin hard and it'll pop through. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, now, as for the code, also linked in the description, uh, I am not a code matician, um, but I did write my first ever function, so pretty proud about that. Um, use it at your own risk, but definitely use it, uh, modify it for your own needs. A lot of the code that's in there is useless uh, for you. This is just for my uh, demonstration's sake. But I mean, go ahead and take a look and, and see what you like and change stuff and whatever. Uh, it's mostly uh, NeoPixel and LCD stuff, so I can show you guys how it works. Um, but yeah, the, the other stuff um, that has to do with the buttons, that's what you really need. And you can combine it with my old video uh, for this guy here if you want to use it as a macro pad for USB. But anyways, uh, let's see how it works. And so this is now on. Hopefully you can see there's nothing on the screen. And when I press, it says the button is, can you see that on your screen? Yeah, button is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And the grand finale, it's lit up. Let me uh, turn off the lights for you, but uh, I want to show you these keys all lit up. A little dark in here, but yeah, I just got uh, number 16 here to give us some 
random LED colors on every press. Um, this is very easy to do yourself. Uh, actually, you can just use the code and use it as is. But yeah, it's pretty clear in the code where you would uh, set up and how you would do things. Just don't forget that uh, these are NeoPixels and so you can't really drive them directly from the Arduino. Make sure you have a good power supply. I'm using my Redin uh, benchtop power supply here to power it. Um, but, I mean, that's just regular NeoPixel stuff. And so yeah, I'm running these at a, about a quarter brightness or else uh, I'd start uh, browning out or overdrawing my board and then uh, this thing goes a little bit nuts. The other thing is in the code there is a calibration routine uh, where you you find the the max and min values for each button just by running the code and pressing the button on the serial monitor. I recommend doing that while this thing is lit because if you can see that was a 2 but it was supposed to be a 1. So I did the calibration while the LEDs were not lit and they share a ground and a power. Uh, so there will be a voltage drop through your cables which will make the analog read a little bit less precise. Uh, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, you just you know make sure they're lit, run the calibration procedure and then you're good to go. And so that's it. Uh, if you want the uh, code explained, let me know in the comments below. If enough of you want to see it, I'll just do a video explaining it. Other than that, most people check out during the code section. Uh, nobody watches it, so I figured I would leave it out this time. But yeah, this uh, board where you can make your own sort of macro pads and kind of a lot of them too um, is available on PCBWay and I made sure it's within the specs to be very inexpensive. So all the parts you need linked on PCBWay and in the description below. Thanks for watching. What do you think I should do next with these key switches? I've got a whole bag of them.